this slide outlines the design check for a typical bolted pin to column connections using an end plate. The configurations of the connections is illustrated in the figures here. There are three main components in the connections. This is the column, this is the beam, and there is an end plate in between the beam and column. The end plate is welded to the beam. At the same time, it is bolted to the column. To ensure the stability of the connections, the joint between the plates and the beam as well as the joint between the plate and the columns should not fail. Both need to be checked in terms of the capacity and the weaker resistance would govern the strength of the connections. This list outlines the checking criteria for the connection here. As there are bolted connections, bolt holes are to be created on the end plate, we need to check for the edge distance and the spacing. Next, we need to check for the ductility of the joint. Check the shear resistance of the bolt. Check the bearing resistance of the bolt hole. Check the weld between the plate and the beam. Check the shear resistance of the end plate as well as the local shear resistance of the beam web. And lastly, check for block tearing failure. For the edge distance and the spacing, table 3.3 of Eurocode 3 part 8 is to be referred. For checking the ductility of the connections, if in accordance to clause 3.2.2, the ultimate tensile stress needs to be at least 10% higher than the specified U strength. As for the beam to column connections, these are being referred. The connections can happen at the web or at the flank. The checking for the ductility requirement would be slightly different with different type of the connections. Let's say we take this connection as an example. The beam is connected to the web of the column. This equation is to be used. The TP here will be less than or equals to the equations given here. There will be both sides. There will be the ultimate strength of the boat and also specify yield strength of the plate. The TP here represents the thickness of the plate. In the case that the beam is connected to the flank of the column, either of these two equations need to be complied. One is looking at the thickness of the plate, while another one is looking at the thickness of the column flank. The requirement for the thickness of the plate will be the same as in this connection. As for the requirement for the thickness of the column flank, the equations will be identical to the thickness of the plate except that the FY column is used here. The connection is considered ductile upon fulfillment of either one of the requirements here. Next, we look into the shear resistance of the boat. This can be determined from the equations given here, which has been discussed in our previous video. Following will be the bearing resistance of the boat hole, which can be determined from this slide and it is also being discussed in our previous video. Next, we look into the resistance of the welded connections, which can be referred from this slide and this example, which have also been discussed in our previous video. 
Next, we need to determine the shear resistance of the end plate. To check for the shear resistance of the end plate, the shear load needs to be less than the shear resistance of the end plate. So that the ratio here, it will be less than 1.0. In terms of the shear resistance, we need to check for the plastic shear resistance and also the shear resistance in the presence of the fastener holes. The equations are given here. The two cases here refers to two different shear plans. For the plastic design, we are referring to the shear plan here. As for the presence of the fastener hole, we are referring to the shear plan here. We shall discuss one by one in detail. Let us look into the plastic design of the shear resistance. The equation is given here. The AV here represents the shear plan. FY is specified yield strength of the steel. FY divided by square root 3 represents the shear capacity of the plate. And the factor of safety gamma M node will be equals to 1.0. The AV here is obtained from these equations, which is divided by a constant number of 1.27. The 1.27 is the coefficients for the steel plate. In case that an angle is being used, the coefficients will be equal to 1.0. And this HP multiply the thickness of the plate is actually referring to the shear plan here. The HP is the height of the plate, while the TP is the width of the plate. For a better imagination, the shear plan here is actually referring to the shear plan on the welded plate just beside the beam web. This is the column, this is the welded plate and this is the web of the beam. Imagine the setup of the connections, obtain the relevant value, substitute the value into the equations, we will get the shear resistance of the plate and this is to be checked against the shear load. Next, we look into the fastener hole situations. The equations to check for the shear resistance due to the fastener hole is given in these equations. Now, instead of using Fy, we are using the Fu. The Fu divided by square root 3 represents the stress shear capacity at the ultimate situations. The AV net represents the effective area net which is minus the bolt hole. It is obtained based on the equation here as graphically illustrated in the diagram here. Depends on the number of bolt hole along the HP the total length of the plate without the bolt hole is quantified. This is to be multiplied with the TP. And the effective area is shown here. This area is technically the shear area at the positions of the bolt hole. As the bolt hole is technically a void, which do not provide any shear resistance, their contributions to the shear resistance need to be omitted. Again, you need to imagine the setup of the connections, find the relevant value, substitute the relevant equations, you will be able to obtain the shear resistance due to the fastening hole. And this shear resistance is to be checked against the shear loop to check 
the shear resistance of the connections. Next, we need to check for the local shear resistance of the beam web. The relevant equation is shown in the slide here. The shear loops need to be less than the resistance provided by the beam web. So that the ratio here to be less than 1.0. To determine the local shear resistance of the beam web, this equation is being used. There will be effective shear area of the web. Specify yield strength of the web. And factor of safety, gamma M node which is equal to 1.0. The effective shear area of the web is shown in the figure here. As the weld is only welded at both sides of the web, we are unable to consider the effective shear area with an equivalent height of the height of the plate. With that, we omit 5% and 5% of the total length here to be multiplied with the thickness of the web to be considered as an effective area for the shear due to the local shear resistance of the beam web. Imagine the setup of the connections. Find the relevant value. Adopt the equations. Substitute the value. You will get your plastic shear resistance of the web. And this is to be checked against the shear loops acting on the connections. The last checking criteria will be the block tearing failure. These are typical block tearing failure of a bolted connections. It occurs when some part of the member has been teared out due to the group of the bolt holes. Taking this as an example, the shear loops acting on the member here. There are three bolt holes here. This region is likely to be tear off and the tearing part will go for the shortest route between the bolt holes and the last piece of the bolt hole. Same principles go for the other connections. Under tension loop, the block tearing can happen in this manner, where the whole piece of the member is being teared off. To determine the shear resistance due to the block tearing, this equation is applied. First, you need to be able to imagine the connections, anticipate the directions of the loops, and to identify the regions of the member which is undergoing tensions or shear. Taking this figure as an example, the beam here is to be connected to a column. The columns provide the reactions to resist the shear loop acting on the beam. Under such circumstances, this region will undergo shear while these regions will undergo tension. So that the block here would tear off. From there, we will be able to determine the effective area under the shear and under the tensions. It is basically calculated by the effective width here multiply the thickness of the web, as well as the total effective length here minus the numbers of bolt hole multiply the thickness of the web. With the effective area determined, the tensile component is determined by these equations, which is in the function of Fu and gamma M2. Gamma M2 is equals to 
As for the shear component, the shear stress is to be quantified. The factor of safety will be gamma m node, which is equals to 1.0. The resistance here is to be checked against the shear load. For the member to have adequate design block tearing resistance, the resistance here need to be greater than the shear load. Also, there is one more thing that you need to be aware of. Where the equations for the block tearing differ slightly under the conditions of asymmetrical bolt group. The equations discussed previously is meant for a symmetrical bolt group. Such as for the case like this. In the case of the asymmetrical bolt group, which may lead to a resultant rotational effect of the connections, the tension component is to be reduced by half. With that, this outline all the calculation check for the bolted beam to column connections using an end plate. In summary, you need to be able to imagine the setup of the connections for you to check and design for the connections. Some of the criteria are met for the bolted connections. Some is referring to the welded connections. You need to be able to imagine the locations of the shear plan as well as the shear resistance of the web and also imagine the possible failure in terms of the bolt tearing.